Hello everyone, this is Mr. Appel, and today we're going to go off on a tangent. <laughs> yes, we're going to be studying tangents of circles and learning some new theorems about them. So here we go. So, uh, the first example, uh, and we've kind of talked about this in class already, so this might not be anything new. Uh, what we're interested in is if AB there is a diameter, what's, uh, what's the measure of angle ABC? What's the measure of angle ABC? So this angle here, um, if that's a diameter. Well, from what we've learned earlier, if that's a diameter, then this arc here, this arc here, this semicircle, measures 180 degrees. And you'll notice that this angle that we're interested in, angle ABC, has its vertex on the circle, right? And what happens then? If the vertex is on the circle, the angle is half the arc. Well, since the angle of the arc is 180, the angle is 90. So what does this mean for us? It means if a line is tangent to a circle, then it's perpendicular to the radius at the point of tangency. Basically, if you have a tangent on a circle, it's going to be perpendicular to that tangent line. So that's always, whoops, that's always going to happen there. Okay, so you want to write that down. Get that in your notes. That's an important one. Moving right along. Uh-oh, uh it's a proof. Yep, that's right, it's a proof. Don't worry, it's an easy one. I'm going to walk you right through it. But you might want to give it a try. Maybe try to pause me and then just outline the proof if you can and just see what you can do with it. Um, it does relate to something you've some a lot of stuff that you've seen before, but now I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through it. Uh, one hint I'll give you if you got stuck is you are gonna need to add some things to this figure. So let's take a look. So if x y and x z are tangent to the circle, so these two uh, these two segments here. Hang on a sec. Let me get my little pointer. This this segment or this line and this line, if they are tangent to the circle. Uh, we want to prove we want to prove that this segment and this segment are actually congruent. So two tangents that start basically at the same point that both come from x. I'm going to prove that those two tangents, that this one and this one, have to be equal. So how are we going to do that? Well, first I'm going to draw. I'm going to add some things to the figure. I'm going to draw these two radii, b y and b z, and then I'm also going to draw b x. Now from the last theorem that we just learned a minute ago, we know that since this is a radius and a tangent, those are perpendicular. So that's perpendicular, that's perpendicular. So we've got two right triangles. Okay, uh, so let's now walk through our proof. So first, the given, that x, y, and x, z, segments x, y, and x, z are tangent to circle B. That's given to us. Then B, z, and by are congruent. How do we know that bz and by are congruent? Well, they're both radii of the same circle. That's really just the definition of a radius, right? All radii of a circle are equal. So all you have to say is radii of the same circle are congruent. Number three should be pretty easy. bx, the hypotenuse of those two right triangles, the hypotenuse here, bx, is congruent to itself. And that, of course, is the reflexive property, right? So those two are congruent to each other, reflexive property. And now we can say from the theorem that we, we just saw a moment ago, that we just learned a moment ago, that uh, those two perpendiculars that I pointed out, so this makes a right angle and this makes a right angle, those are perpendicular because if a tangent is, because a tangent is perpendicular to a radius, at the point of tangency. I know that's a very wordy thing to say, this right over here, but basically, again, if you have a tangent to a circle, it's always perpendicular to the radius at that point where it touches the circle. So from that, we can deduce that these are right triangles, and we've got a congruent leg and a congruent hypotenuse. So what do you think we're gonna use to prove the triangle's congruent? Of course, hypotenuse leg. And once we've got those two triangles congruent, we can use CPCTC to show that XZ and XY, I should use different markings there because I put those down at the beginning, that those two are congruent. And there we go. 
All right, next up we're going to uh, look at some new theorems involving chords and arcs in circles, arcs and circles. So let's look at this situation. What if we had a radius, whoopsie, what if we had a radius perpendicular to a chord? Radius that's perpendicular to a chord. What can we conclude from that? Well, I'm not going to make you do a formal proof here. We're not going to walk through a formal proof here. Um, but informally, let's see what we can conclude. So let's just, uh, oopsie, let's try that again. Let's just zoom in on that circle a little bit here. So what we were given was that these two are perpendicular, that that radius and that chord are perpendicular, so those are right angles. Well, we can conclude a couple of things there, but I'm going to need to add some things to the figure. I'm going to draw XC and XE. And just quickly, very informal proof here, uh, we know that those two segments that I just drew are congruent because they're both radii of the same circle. I know that XO here that I just uh, that I see here is congruent to itself, reflexive property. We know that they're right triangles, so by hypotenuse leg, the triangles are congruent. So there's a couple things we can deduce from this. One thing we can deduce from this by CPCTC is that the third sides of the triangle are congruent, that ZO and EO are congruent. So that chord, that chord there, was bisected by the radius. So that's one interesting fact. The other interesting fact is if you look at this angle here and this angle here, angle ZXO and angle EXO, those angles are congruent, again, by CPCTC. And if you'll notice, those angles are actually um, central angles. They're central angles. So this angle here intercepts this arc, and this angle here intercepts this arc. Well, if those two angles, if those two angles are congruent, then that means these two arcs are congruent. So what that means is that original chord that we had, the original chord that we had, is bisected, and the arc that's intercepted by it are also those are are congruent. Sorry, I'm babbling a little bit here, but let's see if I can clear that up. So when you have, let's just read this, and I think it'll be a little clearer. If you have a radius in this case, or a diameter for that matter, but if you have a radius that is perpendicular to a chord, it bisects the chord, it does two things, it bisects the chord, and it bisects the intercepted arc. Okay, so it bisects the chord and the intercepted arc, and that's what you need to, to, to know. Okay, now let's look at an example of how we can, uh, we can apply this. So here's an example, I'm given that AB segment AB is 16 and OM is 6 and I'm trying to figure out the length of the radius which would be OA or OB doesn't really matter which one I pick so let's just zoom in there on that circle and see what we can do here well because we know when this is perpendicular to a chord it bisects the chord so I know that these two are equal uh, sorry if you're hearing Sophie yelling in the background. She's having a play date and being very loud. I should probably go tell her to quiet down, but I'm just going to keep going. It might be fun for you. So AM is 8 and MB is 8 because it bisects that chord. Well, if that chord is bisected, that's 8. Now we've got two out of the three sides in this right triangle, Pythagorean theorem to find OA, and you might recognize that that's a 6, 8, 10 right triangle. So if you didn't notice that, you could use Pythagorean theorem to find out the radius. But if you did notice that, you know right now that that radius is 10. And that's one of the ways you can use some of these new theorems to help you solve problems in circles. Okay, just a couple more new theorems about chords and arcs and circles to, to go through here. Um, so in this example, I've got two two chords, A, B, and C, D, that I'm given are equal to each other. So A, B, and C, D are equal to each other. Um, so what can we conclude in this situation? Well, uh, I'm going to give you a really short informal proof. Again, I'm not going to make you do a formal proof. Um, but basically what I want to show is that they intercept congruent arcs, that the arc that's intercepted there is going to be equal 
to that arc. Now that may seem obvious to you that if those chords are the same length, that those arcs will be the same length, but that's an important theorem. Uh, and it's pretty easy to prove if you just draw triangles. Right? If we just draw those triangles there, we know that this is a radius, and this is a radius, and this is a radius, and this is a radius, so those are all equal. And we were given that AB and CD were equal, so by side, 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 the triangles are congruent. From that, we get that this angle is congruent to this angle, and since those are both central angles, that means that arc AB is going to be congruent to arc CD. And so if those you can see there that if those two chords are equal, then the arcs that are intercepted are also equal. So congruent arcs are intercepted by congruent chords, and the converse is also true. So if, I, if you knew that those two arcs, if you knew that this arc and this arc were equal, then you'd know that those chords were also congruent. Okay, just one more thing here, quickly. So same situation, those two chords are congruent, A, B, and C, D are congruent to each other. We can deduce that they are equidistant to the center, meaning the distance, perpendicular distance mean, is what we mean there, that those distances are going to be equal. In other words, that and that are going to be equal. And again, pretty easy to prove that with triangles. Um, you know what, I'm not even going to walk through the proof of that one. Uh, if you want to try it yourself, you can, but suffice it to say that if those two are, uh, set chords are equal, then they are equidistant to the center. Um, so congruent chords, congruent chords are equidistant from the center of the circle. And that's all for today. Thanks.